So here we are on Monday of Holy Week. Just the day before, we saw Jesus ride into the city of Jerusalem on the back of a donkey as crowds of people cried out, Hosanna. Today, we're going to see the passion of Jesus displayed in the temple. Matthew 21, 12 through 13 says, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. For just a bit of context, back in this time, there were people who would travel far and wide every year so that they could come and worship God in the temple at Jerusalem by offering sacrifices during Passover. And a lot of these peoples weren't farmers and they didn't have access to animals that they would need to sacrifice. And maybe some of them are traveling so far they didn't have the means to bring those animals with them. So as people arrived into the city of Jerusalem, they would have to exchange their foreign currency and then they would be able to purchase the appropriate sacrifices for the temple. And the money changers and the vendors, they ended up setting up shop directly in the temple courts. So basically, we see here a corruption of the reason why people would gather at the temple. Instead of gathering to worship God, they gathered so that they could exchange money and purchase things. We traded the worship of God for commerce, and Jesus would not stand for that. He would clear the temple and restore it. Now, the following isn't based on any scripture evidence. This is just me trying to think through this. So I would just ask that you go there with me for a moment. The corruption of the worship of God at the temple in Jerusalem probably was a slow process. It probably didn't happen that one day there were no vendors or money changers in the courts, and then the next day there were a bunch set up. Now, this was probably a slower process. So maybe a vendor knew, hey, Passover's coming um, up this next week, so I'm going to set up my shop a little closer to the temple. And then maybe the next day it was a little bit closer, and then the next day a little bit closer. And then maybe next year somebody was so bold to set up shop directly in the court. And then as prophets came in, other people saw this, and then they set up their shops in the court. The people who came to worship God slowly were shifting their focus away from God and more on to commerce. Again, this isn't spelled out in the scriptures. This is just me trying to think logically through this. And I think it's an important illustration that we all need to heed. Our worship of God can become corrupted slowly over time, and we might not even realize it. 1 Corinthians 3.16-17 through 17 shows us why this is so important. It says, Do you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. As Christ followers, we need to pay attention to this. We are the very temple of God. We become a holy and sacred place that is dedicated to worshiping God in every moment of our lives and in everything that we do. Make no mistake, God is very concerned with the purity of our worship. And we see that on display as Jesus passionately drove out these things and overturned these things in the temple, the house of his Father. Now the question is, Are there things that we have allowed to slowly creep into our lives that are corrupting our worship of God? Are there things that we need to clear out the temples in our own lives in order to remain sacred and holy for God? Let's pray. God, we ask that you reveal to us the things that are corrupting our worship of you. God, give us a holy passion that burns within us just like the passion of Jesus that causes us to take action to clear these things out of our lives. God, we want to be a dwelling place that is sacred and holy to you. So we just ask that you help us to do this. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.